<laughs> Is anybody in here? Can you guys hear me? <clears throat> of course. <laughs> good stuff. <clears throat> All right, just can wait, see if anybody else jumps on there. We are up to 10, 12. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, what I've learned in in, uh, in 50 years of, of being out on the uh, on the rabbit snare line with with dad and grandfather and and myself and and with others, my friends and stuff. And so, you're never too old or young to learn when it comes to uh, snaring rabbits or doing anything in the great outdoors. That's for sure. <clears throat> Some of the things that we'll go over here is uh, snare size, how the rabbits enter the pen, uh, pen uh, the gate size, the width of the gate, uh, how they can pull snares. I can't believe I, I even seen that. And the uh, snare height. Okay, so we're up to 16. So uh, hope everybody's having a uh, good time. Okay, uh, Mad, Mad Leaf's in. JC, yep. Just got the notification. Newfoundland, Newfoundland, uh, Newfoundland Bushman's in. Good evening, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> you guys can all hear me good, I hope. Give me a... Uh, yes on the on the audio if you guys can hear me good I don't know if it's a huge delay or what yep yeah, thumbs up and yes perfect good stuff guys right on <clears throat> okay well uh, might as well get started then so uh, I said that I would do, uh, after my last video, I said I would do a, a lessons learned or, or talk about some of the lessons learned uh, that I have learned over 50 years of uh, snaring rabbits. <clears throat> uh, I still don't have, obviously you can see it, I still don't have the OBS downloaded and figured out yet. But I am, I am getting ready for that. This is what my uh, kids and grandkids uh, give me for my birthday. So it's uh, some sort of light ring. I can't remember what it's called now. But uh, you can put your camera right in the center of it. and uh, It's supposed to cast good light when you're looking directly at it, I suppose. Uh, if it was here, I guess you would... Something to that effect. Anyway, we'll soon have the OBS up and running. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> See who else. Okay, uh, Sam Rose is here. Tom is here. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Raymond. Uh, Ian Petten is here. Good stuff. Uh, Raymond says, hey, Charlie. Mark is here. Uh, I just got in here, brother. And I can hear you fine. Good stuff. Uh, the boys are talking back and forth to each other. Gunner Air is here. Gunner Air. Do I know Gunner Air? Did we ever work together, Gunner Air? And uh, yeah, hi, Raymond. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, first thing we're on the list is snare size. Okay, I. I set my snares two different sizes and one is on the on the trail sets or the blind um uh blind blind set or trail set 
what I what I normally do when I'm setting those rabbit snares out is I'll look for a, a natural funnel, a natural pinch point where uh, I don't even have to make any guy sticks or, or whatever. I just try to get a snare in there. And that snare is uh, roughly about the uh, size of my palm. Okay. It's uh, four and a half inches across and four inches top to bottom. And I find with snare shape kind of in that in this oval manner, I, sh I, I set my snares in an oval manner. And the reason for that is because uh, they're whiskers, right? But on the blind trail sets, not, not, so, not so important as it is on the pen sets. And the reason being is uh, on, on a pen set, the rabbits normally come to a dead stop before they enter the pen. And then they sit up, sit up in a, in, in a, a more uh, higher posture. And then they slowly go in. So my uh, snares that I set for my pen sets, I make them larger. And it's, uh, let me see here if I can do a little side by side comparison for you guys. Come on, wires. Can you guys see that? And what the measurements on the pen set snare is, it's, uh, I think, four and a half top to bottom and five across. Still uh, roughly the size of my palm, but just a, a touch bigger. And uh, I watched the rabbits uh, go into the pens, if you guys remember, earlier this year. And I did it last year as well. I put out my trail cameras on the pen sets and watch how rabbits enter into the pens. Uh, I'll, I'll just keep talking about that for a second, then I'll do a quick check on, on, the, uh, on the comments. <clears throat> anyway, when a rabbit approaches the pen, like I said, he comes to a stop, and then he'll uh, sniff around the snare. If the snare is not to his liking, or if he smells it, or, or whatever, I actually seen him bite on the bottom of the snare and pull it tight. And I got him on video on more than one occasion doing that. And I always thought when my snares were slipped, they were I was blaming the squirrels for slipping them. Squirrels going through and, and slipping my snares. But not the case. I actually seen the rabbit bite the snare and pull it tight and then go in. <laughs> so um, that is why the pen snare is is uh, a little larger than my trail snare than my trail snares. And for the blind uh, the blind snares or the trail snares, I'll even make this smaller. I'll even make this loop smaller. If I find a, a spot where a little funnel and a, if it's only like four inches across, well, I'm going to have it so my snare fits into that diameter where the small spot uh, where that rabbit goes goes through that uh, little funnel point, right? But uh, when they come to the pen, every single time, they'll stop and then they'll sniff around and then they go in and head and neck first. And that's why you can get away with a, with a larger snare, uh, especially if you load them, especially if you load them, a larger snare uh, on, on a pen set. Especially when the rabbits get cute later in the year when they do. Okay, now I'll jump in and see if I can't uh, catch up on some, some of the comments. No, I'm from the States. Okay, cool, here, gonna, right on, buddy. Ah, uh, Mark, hey, buddy. So. Okay, Raymond Williams. Okay, nice, Mark. Tubby, evening, Charlie. Evening, Tubby, my buddy. Uh, then folks are saying hi to Tubby. Uh, Daniel's in, the Backwoods Barbarian. Uh, right on, Mark, Tubby. Ed Fitzgerald, evening, Charlie. Evening, Ed, how's it going? Noel Hunt, evening, Charlie. Good, e good evening, Noel. Uh, Tubby, Okay. 
Yep. All right. Caught up on the live chat. Okay. So uh, we went over snare size. All right. Uh, now, uh, and we went over how to enter the pins, obviously. Now, geat size. <clears throat> I experiment also with the width of my geats. Okay. And uh, now I was doing this experiment with the chicken wire geats or with the chicken wire pins and uh, just putting in guide sticks. Okay. Now, at the beginning, I went down to, uh, I think it was four and a half inches. And the rabbits really didn't like entering the pen, and it wouldn't re-enter the pen. Although I've seen them on their trails going in much smaller, much tighter openings uh, than four and a half inches. If they get their head true, they're gone true, right? <clears throat> but uh, what I'm finding is anywhere between, uh, this is uh, six and a half inches across here. And <clears throat> anywhere between six and a half to seven inches is almost a perfect size uh, for your uh, gate size in width. All right. That's what I'm finding for when the rabbits get cute this time of year and you're doing the pen sets and you're making your gates six and a half to seven inches. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, now, uh, I already talked about how the rabbits pull, uh, pull the snares and I, I've seen it firsthand and I got it on video and I showed you guys some of the clips. Uh, what you guys got to realize is I didn't show you all the clips. Uh, every time I went out to my trail cameras, uh, I would have somewhere between 20 and sometimes up to 120 uh i think it's was it on 20 second or 30 second videos i think i had it on 20 second videos so i would have somewhere up to uh sometimes 120 video clips that, that go through right so and i only picked the uh, some of them to, to show you guys on the uh on the videos that i posted <clears throat> but uh yeah the rabbits they would uh, definitely uh, come in if they didn't like that snare or if the snare was too small or if the gate was too small, they would grab the bottom of that snare and pull pull backwards onto it and draw it tight, then go into the pen. <clears throat> and for snare height, well, basic rule of thumb, and anybody that does any amount of snare uh, will tell you, um, Normally, the, the size of the snare will determine the height of the, the height of that snare. So, um, if your snare is four and a half inches, or uh, like four inches top to bottom, then the bottom of your snare would be about four inches off the ground. All right. Okay. Show you guys where it's. And but you know what? There's a guy here. I'm telling you, and he catches rabbits. And he has these snares, not aware of a lie. He puts these snares down. He does something like this with, he, with his hand. And he catches rabbits with his snare way higher than I ever. And I've seen where a lot of uh, rabbits will go and duck under snares. You can see, especially when the snow is down, you know they're getting true. They're going underneath the snare, right? Uh, I put the little uh, chin lifter underneath the snare. Normally, if my snare is uh, probably about... Well, I, I go about this high off, off the ground, right? Or, and sometimes I'll go to that knuckle. And then the, the chin lifter will go half that distance from the ground, halfway up, right? And I've seen where if the snare was a little too high, the chin lifter will be pushed down, the rabbit tracks gone underneath the snare, and they, they'll go through, you know? Um, but for the most part, I find like uh, when I'm setting my fox snares, I set them about seven inches in diameter, six and a half, seven inches in diameter, and they're six and a half, seven inches off the ground. My coyote snares are uh, about 10 inches in diameter, 10 to 12 inches in diameter, and they're 10 to 12 inches off the ground. The only exception I find to that rule is when you're snaring bobcat and lynx, you, you, you use a small snare, 
a six uh, to seven inch snare, and that's about 10 inch off the ground. And I always go a little bit bigger because I make my snares a little bit oval. So I always get my snares, uh, and that's for the whiskers again. That's for the whiskers, right? The oval snare. And because they'll lay back your ears, the, the ears don't matter as much as those whiskers matter. That's what I find, anyways. And that's what I was always told. And um, it seems to work. It really does. So, um, where was I going with that? Totally lost my train of thought on that. But oh, yeah. So, for Lynx and, and Bobcat, uh, they, they normally walk in, in a more upright position with the longer leg. And you can uh, get about a seven, seven and a half inch snare, about uh, 10 inches off the ground for, for them, right? And I have seen in my fox snares that I are seven inches on the hammer, or seven inches off the ground, rabbits caught right around the, right around the neck. Uh, and on more than one occasion, too. Okay, so I guess that covered everything on the, the what I said I was going to, to go over with lessons learned on, on the rabbits. Uh, we'll go in here to the live chat now and see if I can't, uh, if there's any questions in there. If you guys got any questions for me, just, just let me know. Okay, Raymond says, smash the thumbs up. Uh, back with rabbit season is over here now. Rabbit season ends on the 14th of March here on the, I don't know, on the remainder of the island. Now, there's some parts of the island where it's going to close a little bit earlier. <clears throat> uh, I got one more rabbit video coming out. Good stuff, buddy. Uh, that's what the back, Backwoods Barbarian has said. I know he was out there with, I don't, I don't know if I should give it away, but I know him and a member of his family had went out to try and catch a rabbit just before the season ended. Uh, Gunner Air. I think them snare pins would be a game changer for you guys. <laughs> if you can use the 110 Conibear, yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, Conibear is uh, uh, pretty uh, quick, lights out for, for, for the rabbits. And the rabbits, they tend to they give up the ghosts a little little quicker than, than uh, mink and weasels and martens and all that stuff does, that's for sure. <clears throat> Thanks for sharing your wealth of knowledge, buddy. Hey, not a problem. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been at this now for 50 years and uh, uh, I learned a lot and I learn I learn stuff every every year, you know, and the things that I learned this year, I, I never, I was always blaming the red squirrel on, on pulling my snares when I'd come up and my snare would be drawn in right tight like a dare. I always would blame the, the red squirrel on that. And come to find out, Mr. Rabbit was coming up, grabbing it with his, in his teeth and, and drawing it tight. <clears throat> I, I couldn't believe it. And that wasn't a one of. He'd done it multiple times. I think I might have showed you guys two clips of where he'd done it, but he'd done it multiple times. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Toby says, uh, that was amazing to watch the rabbit tighten up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Toby, uh, caught me off guard. I, I wasn't expecting to see that. And uh, the first time I seen it, I was like, did I really, did I really see that? Did that happen? Did that just happen? I had to play it over and over again. And, uh, I was able to, to slow it down and watch it a couple times in sequence. And lo and behold, while he's going, he's going up to it, waiting on to the snare, and pulling it tight. I couldn't believe it. I was uh, I was shocked to see it, actually. Uh, Backwards Barbarian. I'm, uh, I'm doing just that now, Ghost Wolf. Picking the better of the clips. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My uh, stupid camera will only do five seconds at night, though. Ah, uh, yes. I tell you, the cameras that I use, boys, the, uh, what are they? Uh, eight man, eight man, H55. <clears throat> Hang on now. Huh? 
<laughs> Cheap little camera. Uh, I think I paid $62 a piece. That's Canadian on Amazon. But uh, they're super easy to, to use. You turn it on, and then you can go step by step through the functions uh, to do all your settings. I've got a video review on these cameras. Um, Word, worth, worth every penny. The only bad thing is, the real bad thing is, if you like for the audio, can you see uh, the speaker right here? That is fully encased, closed down, and like the old uh, Go GoPros. Better turn that off. Like the old GoPros uh, in in the uh, the waterproof housings. The audio was absolutely horrendous. The audio with these are absolutely horrendous. But it's a $62 camera. Now, I think that they retail for maybe about $90. However, um, you can get them on sale. I'm almost 100% sure I paid $62 a piece for them. Okay. And they got a spot here where I make my own mounts. I, I showed, showed you guys that and screws in there. The only thing I don't like about it when you mount them that way and not strap them to the tree is that when they're, because my cameras will always stick out just a little bit from the tree, a bear, and he could break that, snap that off. This, this, is, this is plastic. I can snap that off, you know, so you know a, a bear is going to be able to snap that off as well. Okay, let's see if I can catch back up. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Noel Hunter, what is your favorite way to cook rabbit? Uh, I, I like them in stew or pie. A meat pie or, or rabbit stew. Just love them. But one guy told me uh, <clears throat> he liked his done up like chicken, like chicken bake. Well, I tell you, if you want to eat a tough rabbit, you shake and bake that dry rabbit meat and you put it into the oven and you bake it. And I'm, I guarantee you that was like shoe leather. It was, it was unbelievable. That's uh, something you only do once. And yeah, I wasn't going to let it go to waste. So I sat there and I chewed and chewed and chewed on that rabbit. And every piece was as tough as a, uh, like I said, sh shoe leather. I could eat a shoe faster than I eat that rabbit. Um, Terry Alexander, uh, love your videos, keep them coming. Will do, but Illuminati killer, I guess. Hey guys, he's uh, he's married to a Newfoundlander and living out in BC, if I'm right in saying that. Uh, backwards Barbarian, back to restart my router. Internet was so slow. Ah, yes, funny. <clears throat> I, I live in an area where there's only 85 houses in this, I think it's called a village. I, I can't remember uh, what constitutes a village to a settlement, to a town, to a, to a city. But I, I believe we're, we're a village because so few uh, families uh, or houses and families are up here. <clears throat> And most of them now, their kids are all grown up and gone, you know. So uh, a lot of the houses up here are, are uh, two Z's into them at one point in time. <coughs> yeah, there, there was a whole whack of uh, people up here. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we can't get the fiber optic because of it. We only get the, the cable internet. And it's, it's not the best. Okay, uh, Tubby, uh, same camera. I use fairly great cam for the money. Yeah, Tubby, they, they are, buddy. Uh, for the price, you can't beat that part. You, you can't beat it. And, and if the goal is missing, I, I remember the first trail camera I got. It's not half a camera what those are. And uh, I paid, <coughs> I think it was uh, $200 for it. Never had, uh, never had sound or, or nothing like that. Never. I think it was uh, black and white at, at night as well. 
Is this one black and white? And this one is black and white at, at night. But um, cameras have come a long way and are much easier to use. And the other ones have had a couple of buttons. And you had to remember what sequence to hit the buttons to, to make any changes to the camera settings. This one here, it's got a menu. You walk through it. If you can, uh, if you can use one of these gadgets, you can use one of those gadgets. Okay, uh, oh, we get those. This one is trash. Okay, uh, backwards program again. Working perfect until the winter. Rain Williams says, nice. Corey Sharp, I have a tree cam pack trail cameras, which are only about 50 bucks each on Amazon, and they work great also. Good stuff, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the thing, you know, uh, you know, you're putting, you're putting, equipment out there and and you know I, i'd love to have the money to have all those high-end recon cameras with the wicked sound there's a guy down in the states who puts these cameras out around the uh around in florida like around the florida everglades and all these spots and he's getting alligators and deer and, and uh the florida panther on there and uh, a, a scattered bear you know he's getting a lot of good wildlife raccoons and stuff and people but uh uh, those cameras, I think they're like four or five hundred dollars Canadian, and I'm not taking four or five hundred dollars of my money putting on something that's going to in the woods for someone to come along and take. Uh, bought two stealth cams, uh, QB20 series for. I had the, the stealth cams. Uh, what? I had the 12s. <laughs> I had these, uh, these, these stealth cams, 12s. And uh, I can't remember. There were like probably about 180 for the two of them, and that's the last stealth cams I'll ever use. I'll never buy them again. These here, these two. And now I don't know if the other ones are working better, or if I got a couple faulty ones. But I'm definitely not happy with with that product. Definitely not happy with that product for me. It, it didn't uh, suit my needs. <clears throat> Uh, yes, okay, now, uh, Illuminati, am I saying that right now, I wonder? Illuminati killer. Uh, my mother always put rabbits in a pot of beans. Now, <clears throat> I haven't tried this, but I heard you take, you, you, you make homemade beans, and you cut up the, the rabbits, in, uh, rabbit meat in little chunks, and you put that meat in there, with the with the beans as slowly cooking and it soaks up all that bean juice and when the beans are done the meat is done and i heard it, it was absolutely delicious never did try it but uh i'd be I, i'd love i'd love to, to try that way and a lot of people up here fry fry their uh rabbits and they'll put it in sometimes a little bit of batter but with uh they fry it with uh pork fat and all that stuff you know so it, it's uh, it's got a lot of uh good uh i want to say healthy grease but it's got a lot of uh, stuff there to, to help soak up and add flavor okay uh let's see oh uh, mark oh my god you were hilarious i don't know what was funny but whatever <laughs> uh illuminati yes but we're divorced now bro all good <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, that happens. Hey, bye. Sorry to hear that. Tom, uh, a village is still too large for me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, same here, buddy. Same here. Like, if you can fire off a rifle and your neighbor hears it, he's too close. That's the that's that's my perfect way of living. Don't want to hear my neighbor. Don't want to see my neighbor. Uh, but nice to know that the neighbors are there. <clears throat> uh, Air Gunner. I was very, has a great channel also. Yes, he does. Actually, everybody in here that uh, is posting videos, I watch all you guys and, and the great channels, guys. So stand and keep it up. Uh, keep up the great work. You guys will be way ahead of me because I still haven't figured out how to monetize yet. So... Um, Mark, what did you say? What's up, bud? It's not to Tom, okay? 
Tubby. Tom, okay, you know, they're talking back and forth. Blue tick. Way hot, what high off the ground should the rabbit uh, snare loop be set? Okay, uh, and, and I talked about that earlier. Uh, normally, I put mine. How, how high is that, anyhow? <clears throat> Okay, so that's just, uh, my hand is just a little over four inches. Uh, so just a little over four inches normally I put it. And sometimes I'll put me, uh, put my thumb down like there and, and set it that high. So that would be. That would be five inches. Like that. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, yeah, between uh, between four and five inches of what where I normally put mine. Uh, at the pins, at the pins, you can put them a little bit higher because, like I said, the rabbits stop before they enter the pin and normally come in in a more upright position. Uh, where was that last? Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of great creators out there. I agree with you. Tom is going to, going to sleep soon. You're getting old, Tom. Bye. You need to start taking that naps in the afternoon. Uh, all you BB love to shovel review. Oh, backwards barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you see him throw that? That was a good shot. Don't know how many takes it took. Was that the first take, Daniel? Was it? Was it really? <laughs> um okay but i seen him troll uh axes and knives and stuff he's 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 pretty good at it we used to uh bang around to get her up in, in uh goose bay labrador when we're up there Raymond Williams says his uh, trail cam is still in the woods and he needs snow to leave so he can go get it. Uh, Illumina, Illuminati, Illuminati killer. I do videos on conspiracies ah, and stock market. So not something most of you will want to watch. Depending on what the, can, uh, the conspiracy theories are. Uh, unless you want information on the experimental vaccine which alters your DNA. <clears throat> Mm. Are you talking about the, the COVID vaccine? Uh, a lot of talks on, on that. Anyways, uh, Mark, I was laughing about you talking about chewing chewing on that rabbit. Ah, yes, yeah. Holy jeez, man. My jaws were aching by the time I got that fella down. Yeah, I don't know what I could have done to, I don't know, put it in the blender or something. I think that would have bogged out the, the blender. <laughs> Smoke. Um, I think. Blue tape says tanks. Not a problem. Screw man. Moving back to Deer Lake. Uh, this May. Yeah, good for you, buddy. I uh, can't wait to, uh, to get your rabbit snaring. Can't wait to get our rabbit snaring next fall. Love the videos. Good stuff, buddy. Yes, uh, uh, most Newfoundlanders grew up hunting, fishing, and gathering, picking blueberries. And for us, because we come from a big family, not so much my immediate family, because it was just me and my sister, but my dad come from a family of uh, 19 kids. There were 21 in his family, 19 kids. So uh, a lot of times when we were going out hunting and fishing and all that stuff, we were catching whatever we could or berry picking, picking whatever we could. And we come back and we shared it out with the family. Nothing went to waste, right? Whoever was going into country did the same thing. Whether it was, uh, whether it was berry picking, whether it was trout fishing, whatever, you know, uh, we, we were never ever about uh, catch and release. Uh, that's not how I was raised. Uh, everything that we went out there in the woods to get, that was food. That was for our next meal or for, putting meals aside to get us through the winter. Uh, catch and release, I'm still not sure what I think about that. 
Okay. I was, I was only planning on being on for about 30 minutes. How long has it been now? 36. Probably get off at, at 11. That would be long enough. Flatten my gums. Uh, da, 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 da. So. Got a second to tell me what you hate about stealth camps. Um, yeah. Uh, first off, what I didn't like about these... I got three buttons. Can you see that? Up, down, and enter. So every time I was trying to uh, turn it on and, and either go from picture taking mode to uh, to video mode or wanting to, to lengthen the, the length of the video uh, that I was capturing, like take it from let's say a 15 second uh, uh, video to a 20 second or 30 or whatever. Uh, I was always in the woods trying to figure out, okay, how do I do that again? What do I got to do? Right? So that, that's, the, that's one of the things I didn't like about it. And for whatever reason, this camera uh, in the video mode, picture mode, works perfect. I get the, the date timestamp, you know, all the, on, all the pictures. It tells you, you know, stealth cam. Um, sometimes it tells you, like, the moon phase, the date, the time, the temperature, some of them. Uh, on the video modes, for whatever reason, whatever video capturing format this is, it doesn't marry up with my Mac at all. So uh, the bottom, whole bottom part, uh, everything gets cropped in, and I, I lose my date timestamp with the stealth cams. But I don't lose it on the Moultrie that I had, and I don't lose it on the eight mans. And I uh, found that. Uh, the color, the color, and I, it was in, the, in the video that I did, I did a comparison between the two, between the two of these, and they're both facing the same way. And and for triggering, I was walking back and forth in front of the camera. This one will sense you way more than double the distance that this one does. So, uh, and I, I paid more. I paid more for my stealth cams than I did for this one. These are stealth cam 12s. So I guess 12 megapixel. These are eight man twenties. So, um, yeah, difference of probably one, maybe two years in, in technology. So I don't know if that has something to do with it, but I was really happy with the shape and the size and how light and everything that these were. But then I, I knew cause I'd go out and I see moose tracks or whatever, and I wouldn't get the picture or, and I was like, man, that should have that should have captured, but this year captures them. But other than that, you know, they're okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, now where we're we at. Uh, Rainy River, sixty Fahrenheit degrees. Holy jeez, sixty. Uh, 32 is freezing for you guys. That's warm, maybe eh, like in northern Minnesota today. Wow. Ooh, snow's about gone. Well, I uh, just came off the roof the, the, this evening. I was up there. We had over two feet of uh, snow on onto the roof. And because uh, the last snowfall that we got, we didn't get the good winds to, to, to push the snow around. So on the back side of the house, where there was a little bit of wind, all the snow gathered on the back half of the house here. And uh, there were some on the front, but it wasn't that deep, maybe a foot deep only on the front. And maybe maybe mid a bit more than two feet on the back, probably about two and a half feet. Anyways, I got up and I scraped that all off with the, with the scoop uh, yesterday and today. Because we got rain coming Thursday and Friday. Uh, but we still got a lot of snow. Well, like, I could literally walk off the back of my, uh, house and I'm only falling not even five feet to the snowbank. 
Uh, yes, mRNA vaccine. Yes, boy. Well, a lot of conspiracy theories out there, that's for sure. Uh, backwards Barbarian. It was the first take on it. Uh huh. He says it's the first take, Daniel. Really, buddy? <laughs> Good stuff. No, I I, I seen him. Uh, I seen him. I seen Daniel throw uh, axes and, and knives before. So if he's saying he got it on the first take, I believe him. I was impressed when you know when he was throwing axes and stuff. Michael Owens. Hi, I bought a hundred eight six hundred after seeing your uh, great review of it. Thanks for the advice. I love it. I'm getting the uh, parts for some rabbit snares with your instruction. Hey, good stuff, buddy. Uh, yeah, the Tundra six hundred eight. I'm telling you, this is my fourth year with it now. I've had it stuck four times. If you've seen in the last video, I had it stuck there. Uh, but and every time it's stuck, it's always this this way into a snowdrift. Or more, right? But once you can, uh, all I did to get it unstuck was I dug underneath the uh, uh, side rails or tunnels or uh, what the hell, running board, underneath the running boards, and just a little bit at the back. So I was able to go back about uh, maybe uh, anywhere between, uh, I'd say, 12 to 18 inches. And I just did that a couple times and uh, kept going further and further each time. And then I shot right up out of it. Not a problem, and that's what I like about that that machine. If you can move a tundra forward or back one inch, you're not stuck. You just take your time and you tap yourself a trail, pack it down, pack it down, and then when you got her where you figure you're going to shoot it up, give her. <clears throat> and I, I do most of my uh, adventures and everything out there by myself, right? So it's nice to to know that I can go out and back. Under, under my own uh, accord type thing. Uh, backwards burying. Like eight times it bounced off. <laughs> Good stuff, buddy. Corey Sharp. My seven cameras are still in the woods also. 500 kilometers away. Ah. Yeah, buddy, if they're 500 kilometers away, they're going to be there for a while, I imagine. They like. <clears throat> uh, Toby. Uh, have a good night, guys. I gotta run. Night, Toby. Buddy, take care. That was very. The wife loves berry picking. Uh, yes. Um, I didn't like it when I was a kid because, like I said, when we went berry picking as as a family, it wasn't going out <coughs> for an hour or two. You went berry picking. You left before daylight, and you didn't come back until after dark. And you picked all day long. You had your snack out there. You had a lunch. You had a supper. You had everything out there in the woods. And then when you had all your containers and buckets full, you come back, you clean them all up. You weren't done then. You had to clean all the berries and then figure out how they're going to get distributed uh, with, uh, with the, the folks, you know. And, uh, yeah, so it was when you were a kid and you said they were going berry picking, you knew that this was an all-day uh, tasking and everybody pitched in if you were <clears throat> five years old and you can hold a bucket in your hand you were expected to sit there in the woods and, and fill that bucket right not like the kids today they, they they don't have that i guess attention span or whatever that we had but uh you know you give them one of these gadgets and they they're all over and they can figure out do anything onto it and i still can't but uh yeah when it comes to that kind of stuff we knew when we were out there gathering wood, if we went fishing, if we went hunting, you were there. That was for that day, you know, all day, all day, unless you're gone to the hunting camp or, or fishing, uh, then you could be out there for a week on end. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard on the knees and back, buddy. I can guarantee you that. Uh, that was very close, but uh, I never... New catch and release was a thing until I left home. Yeah, exactly. Um, Daniel's a, Daniel comes from the backwards barbarian. He comes from Newfoundland. 
and he never knew there was such thing as uh, catch and release before because that's something that we just never did do no matter what you're going after we would go and catch it uh try to catch our limits whatever those limits were and and then clean and 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 preserve or share out uh what you caught <clears throat> okay mark i could listen to you all night and learn uh more every time i watch you buddy thanks uh thanks mark boy um like I said, uh, this is something that I've done. This is something that everybody around here has always done, you know. Uh, this is how we were raised here. Um, there was never a lot of money growing up. So we had to go and fish, hunt, and gather to, to get our food, to, to get us through the winters and plant vegetables and stuff like that, right? <coughs> okay. I might uh, I might do a video on that this year. I'm gonna go back uh, and and do a, a video like uh, some of the old timers used to do it. They go out and they find a nice black soil alongside of a brook in the aller bed. They clear that out, and then they, that's where they would plant their carrots, stuff that grew in good into the soil, right? Because uh, you can go out here, man. There's a lot of rock in the backyard. You grow a carrot, it could be that big around. But only only with that long because you got nothing to go down into like you know and sometimes they go and they work their way in and around the rocks and the roots and all, all that stuff so if you can get it into good soft ground you're going to get a better vegetable you know and uh, right next to the brook so it's easy to, to water and look after only thing is uh, you know with the moose and stuff like there you may go back and, and and have half a garden or no garden but that's the that's the way that a lot of the old fellas would do it they would have uh, little areas cleared out in all their beds where that good black soil was, and uh, they would plant their vegetables there, you know, and, and just go through the brook to, to, to grab their water to, to water their vegetables. So I was thinking about, uh, you know, doing like kind of a step back in time and, and planting some, uh, some carrots and beets and stuff like that there, and potatoes out, out in that manner, you know, like they, they used to years ago. Uh, Ed Fitzgerald, still share the harvest day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that's what I that's what I do too, Ed. But he good for you, but he he said he uh, Ed Ed was raised the same way. You know, uh, whatever you uh, went out there to catch, you caught it, you share it out. That's food. You don't you don't throw away. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing ever goes to waste. And that that's good on you there, Ed. <clears throat> and he come from a family of eight. Thank you, uh, Daniel, for that comment. Uh, Michael Owens, love your videos. Please keep posting them. Thanks. I really enjoy the scenery of your area. That million dollar view video had me looking for property in Newfoundland. Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't do no good uh, videos this year. But if you go back in in, in the archives. And, and see some of my uh, scudoing videos back here, up there on the Louis Seals. Like you can walk on the Earth's mantle back there. That's that's where they prove the uh, t uh, tectonic plate tectonics and and the te tectonic upheaval, where the, the the big plates crash together. One goes down, one goes up, and, and the mantle is actually on the surface of the Louis Hills. You can walk onto it. Yeah, I think uh, even with today's technology, they can't drill down to the mantle. But up there, you can walk onto it. That's pretty, uh, pretty impressive, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a very rugged area, and sometimes just to go, just to go a mile, if you're trying to do it as a crow flies on foot, <clears throat> man, you're you're in for a long trek because you're up and down ravines and over hills and uh, granite. Cliffs and you name it, Tuckamore is taller than what you are. Trying to fight your way through that, you can you can spend two three hours trying to go a mile. Yeah, when when the going's tough, you know. So it's a uh, it's a it's a beautiful land, it's a rugged land. Uh, it, it can be very forgiven and very unforgiven. So you got to got to totally respect it. 
Okay, where are we at here? Um, hey, f hunt for fish is in. Hey, right, buddy, he's got a good channel too, man. He's he's got a good channel. He's always in, he's outdoorsy. He's always out in the woods, and and same thing. He's raised the same way that we all were. You know, you you go fishing for your trout. You catch your trout. You eat your trout. You salmon. Uh, he's rabbit snare and he's moose hunting. He's a trapper. Uh, he goes berry picking. He, do, he does everything that we do. He does. Uh, great channel. Check him out, guys. <clears throat> My grandfather was telling there was not much snow in Deer Lake. Lots of rocks still. Not much. Yeah, this has been a very uh, slow winter in common. I don't know when the last time you were talking to your grandfather, Derek Snow, man. But uh, I, I tell you, winter did come, and uh, we got lots of it out there now. That's for sure, because we never had a mile since it, since it come. But we're getting a mile on either, I think, uh, Thursday and Friday, I think we're getting mile temperatures. So, um, yeah, I had my rabbit pins and everything all pulled up for forever <laughs> because just couldn't keep up with it. Couldn't, I was doing a driveway twice a day, and the last thing I wanted to do was go trek around in the woods, you know. Yeah. See, tax man looking for money on me. No, buddy, I, I don't make any money on, on YouTube because I, I'm not monetized. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I, I, I got to get it done, though, you know. I know I'm missing out. <clears throat> and I know that uh, something about an algorithm and, and, and YouTube will start, will start help promote my channel if... If I were to uh, monetize my channel and stuff, because I'm helping demo, you know, so uh, I'll learn how to do it. But I, I don't like a lot of the videos that has a lot of commercials into it. If it's got a whole whack of commercial, I turn no matter what that video is, I'm not watching it. Can't can't sit down there and watch ten commercials to watch a twenty minute video. That's just ludicrous in my mind. <clears throat> So if I do monetize, yeah, I probably run maybe like three, three uh, was it ads at the most, you know? <clears throat> I don't know if it gives you a choice on how many ads you can run because some people only run like three, maybe five or something. That's bearable, but you know, I, w I wouldn't want to. I never got into this for the, for the for the money. But yeah, interesting. Tax fans coming after YouTube money. Sad, really, eh, bye. <clears throat> Are you picking them um, to eat right away here? I, I guess you're talking about the, the berries, Daniel. Picking them to eat right away. Never like, yeah, Raymond says he never liked picking them unless he was eating them fresh. Yeah. <clears throat> but, Picking them is not so bad, especially if you want to go out like for a gallon or something, right? You you, just, you get a, into a good blueberry patch or bake apple patch or whatever. Lord geez, you can even pick a gallon of berries pretty quick if you get into a really good patch. But uh, like I said, growing up, man, that was when they set aside time to go and, and do certain outdoor activities. That was all day, man, because you're trying to get as much berries to get you... <coughs> through the winter and then there was geez you had to clean them and jamming how many bottles of uh, blueberry uh, jam and raspberry jam and strawberry jam and big apple jam you know because you only freeze so much because the freezers were mostly meat and everything going into them so everything berries a lot of it went to jams and pies and stuff like there but yeah if you could eat them fresh i always used to like to uh eat a little bowl of blueberries with a little bit of sugar sprinkled on top of it and, and, and milk just like a, you would cereal you know <clears throat> I always thought that was a pretty good way of eating them yeah catch a uh, backwards barbarian says catch and release is what you do when you caught a sculpin yeah that that's a mighty ugly fish in that all mountain lips <clears throat> Yeah, uh, 
Raymond and exactly uh, flounders and flatfish in in, in, in sculpins, uh, we would in Connors. We would uh, go down. I don't even know if you're allowed to go down to the wharf now and, and, and catch those those fish, big fish, what we used to call. But when you you know you're you're trapping or whatever, you know, you you go down and you catch a take a five gallon bucket and or whatever you need it for to set out for your for your traps and whatever you got on the hook, whether it was a flounder, fish, sculpin, conner. You uh, you took it, you threw it in the bucket, and that was used for for uh, trapping. You know. <clears throat> uh, the boys are crabs and lobsters, mainly lobster. Yeah. Newfoundland was once the home to giants, eight feet tall natives. And uh, the white man slaughtered them all. <clears throat> yeah, they said that the giants, uh, you know, many many places they they lived. Seen uh, seen some shows. Uh, I don't know what I watch it on on YouTube. It's like almost like a, a history channel every now and then. Something that actually I try to watch when I'm uh, going to bed because uh, sometimes the narration is a little slow into it and it puts me to sleep. So. This is like a nighttime story, yeah, like you were a kid. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they said that they're, 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 they got proof now that there was giants that did once walk on, on the earth. Well, in Newfoundland, if you look the way Pangea, is it Pangea? Uh, the, the supercontinent that we had. Newfoundland was once almost the center of that, you know, and it broke up and the part of Newfoundland is down in Africa. Uh, over in, uh, I think, like uh, Ireland and North America, right? <coughs> so, yeah, interesting. We got fossils here, the oldest fossils uh, found in the world, you know. Uh, IRC Adventures, I watch Hunt for Fish, great videos. Yes, indeed they are, my buddy. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna have to tune into your channel there, uh, Illuminati, and then see some of those uh, conspiracy theories that you got going on there. Every now and then, that tweaks uh, tweaks my interest too. You know, I like that kind of stuff. So keep it up, Corey Sharp. Keep up the great work on the videos. They are great to help with uh, getting through these trying times. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. The some some rough times, you know, with this pandemic and everything. Uh, Man, I can't wait for this uh, COVID to be behind us, that's for sure. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, Hunt for Fish, buddy. Out east, we pick berries. Now I live on the west coast and we pick wild mushrooms. You know, a uh, buddy of mine picks a lot of wild mushrooms here, too. But that's something that I got to be perfectly honest with you. I want to learn. But I don't want to learn it by myself. I want to make sure if I'm going out picking mushrooms, I'm going out there with somebody who's very knowledgeable and has the ability to show me in, in, in the definition of what I'm actually looking for, what that mushroom is, how to prepare it, how to, how to you know, what portions I should be eating. Um, because there's a lot of stuff out there that, that's not good when, when you're in the mushroom world. But good on you if you got that down, man. That's a that's a great skill to have. Lots of uh, I have a buddy of mine <coughs> who's always always out looking for mushrooms here in Newfoundland. I think he said there's something like sixteen different kinds that he, he picks to eat. So I'm gonna get him to teach me. That's uh, that's something I would love to learn. Oh yeah. No problem, sugar over blueberries. Yep. Nothing like sugar, eh? Man, we used to put, as kids, no wonder we had so many cavities, eh? Man, you had a, a spoonful of sugar, went over everything, man. Spoonful of sugar, yeah. Speaking of sugar, I, I, don't, I don't put sugar in my tea. I put honey in my tea now. <sighs> Getting a little bit chilled there now. Can I get that down in the gut? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I bought a couple of those blueberry rakes uh, it. Uh, but I bought them when I was up in Labrador, and they work amazing, amazing on picking what we call partridge berries here on the island. But they call, uh, I think they call them red berries. Daniel, remember what they call them up there? I think they call them red berries. They're always best uh, picked after the first frost or two. Very, uh, I think the way to describe them would be a tart, a tart, tart, berry. But they're really good in muffins and stuff like that. Oh, blah, blah. And I, I can eat them by the handful, so I don't find them bitter or sour at all. <clears throat> Raymond says he's dead like frozen blueberries with cream and sugar. Yeah, sugar, man, I tell you. We used to, uh, everything that we eat had sugar. We would cut a piece of apple off, dip it in sugar, eat it. Um, rhubarb, eh? We out in, uh, rhubarb from the garden. Bite off a chunk of rhubarb, dip it in the sugar. Bite next bite, every every bite you, you uh, dunk it in the, into the sugar. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I think I'm half sugar. <clears throat> no wonder I'm so sweet. Uh, there is uh, still uh, the, the debate as to whether or not um, the biotic were actually uh, was true uh, genocide because there's uh, apparently the biotic DNA. They did get the skull back from uh, the last chief and they were able to extract some DNA onto it and people are coming up with uh, with uh, traces of uh, uh, biotic uh, uh, DNA you know, today. So, Chanterelle. I think I said that right. Chanterelle is uh, the best mushroom, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah. Red Rose or Tetley? This here? Why, well, I think it's Tetley. But, yeah, I think it's Tetley. Roundy bag. I don't know if red roses are square tea bags or around. Uh, this one had a round tea bag. But uh, all the tea, we buys them in the box, and then we chose them into uh, just tea bag. Uh, like you got, I guess what you got in there? You got, I think you got sugar. You got your tea bags. You got another bigger, and it keeps getting bigger. You know, a small bowl, a bigger one, and then a bigger one or a jar, I guess. And uh, I think the last one got flour or something into it. But uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't really know. I, I they're round tea bags, anyway. So I think it's definitely parish berries. Yeah, but they call them red berries. I think up in, in Labrador, uh, Daniel. <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a good. Uh, Chantels are easy to buy, same as hedgehogs, uh, hot rolls and mushrooms, puffball mushrooms, all easy to uh, identify. Yeah. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I got I to gotta learn them. I really do. Uh, that's a new interest I got. Never had interest in it before, but now I kind of want, you know, because it's nice to, to know all the wild edibles, right? And the mushrooms was the one thing that I was always uh, hesitant. Uh, to learn, to learn about. <coughs> uh, la, last year I learned by using the rule of two. I picked two edible mushrooms and learned everything about them, including their poisonous, their poisonous lookalike. Oh uh, yes, yeah. And that's, that's the thing, see, the, there's a lot of lookalikes out there. So, do you guys... Uh, Mark saying, do you guys get morals up there? No, uh, Mark, Daniel got no morals at all, bye. <laughs> Partridge berries are called low bush or cranberries OS. Right on. That's like uh, the, the big apple. Here we call them big apples. Some people call them the cloud berry. Some people call them salmon berries. 
So that goes by two or three names too, you know. There's probably more names than that onto it. <clears throat> and IRC says, or is it a squash pea? Squash pea? Or squash berry? Squash berries, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we get squash. Uh, Squash, squash. We got squash berries here. Uh, there's another name onto them too. Uh, I can't remember. And uh, now there's a debate going on in, into the family between well, was before Dad had passed between Dad and and his his brothers and stuff. What we used to call uh, makok. It's too. Uh, that's the type of berry that we get here. One was saying it was this berry, and the other one was saying it was that berry. Uh, I don't know if that's a native term or uh, if that was a French term or uh, a combination of the two, but uh, we'd be always out there picking a mahok too. <clears throat> Tetley are around. That's what I'm drinking by Tetley. And it's cold, chill now. Not cold, but not, not hot. <clears throat> Tetley brings you around. <laughs> canister set. Oh, can canisters, yes, buddy. That's what it is. A canister set. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, sometimes I guess lost for words like there, especially when they're fancy around the kitchen, eh, boy? Yeah, canisters. Yes, red berries. Yeah, that's what they used to call them. Holy. Let me see now. Daniel Everly, I guess, if I'm saying that. Hey, man, how's it going? I love your videos. I'm 15 years old and love learning little tips and tricks from you in your videos. They're so peaceful and well made. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, my buddy. I'm glad you enjoy those videos. I try to make an, uh, you know, make it so that it, it appeals to, to everybody, whether you're 8 years old or 80 years old. You can watch it and, and not be offended, you know. Um... I guess I still offend people because I'm, I do hunt fish and, 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 and kill, you know, but uh, I try to uh, do it in a very respectful manner, you know, <clears throat> and this is something that I've always known. My earliest childhood memories goes back to doing this very same thing, you know. I forgot about old King Cole. Jeez. I wonder is Hunt for Fish still on in, 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 the, in the chat here? Years ago, back in the 70s, <clears throat> I can't remember if it was Tetley, if it was Red Rolls, or what it was, but it come into a box. I can't remember if there were orange, a bit of orange onto it, or a bit of red onto it. But you, you open up the box, and it was the tea bags and all that stuff into it. But you had little tiny figurines, little... I guess porcelain or whatever kind of figurines, like sometimes dogs or whatever, but uh, they would be into the into the uh, into the tea into the with, mixed up with the tea bags in the boxes. So if uh, anybody can remember them from back in the seventies, uh, let me know what kind of tea that was, would you? <clears throat> uh, Splash berries, I call high bush berries, yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, Sunfish. Do you dip the rhubarb in sugar all the time or only when you was younger? <clears throat> yeah, I don't. <coughs> I don't eat the rhubarb much now, you know, other than in cobblers. That's how I got my favorite way to eat rhubarb is rhubarb cobblers or, or rhubarb jam. I like that. Rhubarb and uh, rhubarb and... Uh, Rhubarb and strawberry, rhubarb and raspberry. Uh, rhubarb is a, is a great um, thing to add to other 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 things to make up a, a good uh, multi uh, serving of, of jam or whatever. Yeah, but uh, no, I haven't uh, eaten sugar like that <laughs> since I was you know since I stopped being a kid, I guess. But uh, when we were kids, man, we did we didn't want to come into the house. Hey, we wanted once you got outside, you wanted to play outdoors all day long. 
You only had to come home to eat. So anytime you could eat, like, whatever we find out in the woods to eat or in somebody's garden to eat, that's what we would do, you know. <clears throat> Go knock on the door and see if we can get a little plate full of sugar and we all be dumping her. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that would be a big treat for us. We didn't get chocolate bars and bags of chips and stuff like that. Cloudberries are delicious. We have them here on the tundra. Yes, buddy, they are. Yeah, uh, I really, I really do like them. Uh, problem is here in Newfoundland, they're getting forty and fifty dollars a gallon for these uh, big apples. We call them big apples. And what happens is they're picking them before they're actually ripe. So. Uh, and by doing that, you know, when you're picking a, a green berry or not fully ripe berry, you're harming the, the plant that the berry's onto. But people are not going to stop it. They're going to get that kind of cash for, for the berries, you know. They're just going to, uh, you know, feast or famine or whatever. They go out there and they'll just. I, I had a couple of patches of blueberries that me and my cousin Jackie were keeping an eye on to. And man, there was blueberries, or not blueberries, uh, baked apples everywhere. And we said, okay, yeah. Uh, Maybe four to seven days we come back because that's when it'll be prime. We came back and there was not a berry to be seen anywhere. They came behind us and they picked their clean. <clears throat> okay, uh, R I R C. Nice to see uh, a young fella interested in the outdoors, Daniel. Kudos. Yes, buddy. It is good to see. It's really good to see. Um, Good on you and, and, and good on your, your parents for encouraging you to, to keep up that activity. Well done, buddy. <clears throat> Snipezilla. But you offend the people that are eating cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets. <laughs> well, you know, but they don't see it that way, I guess. If they, if they don't see it getting uh, Killed. If they don't see what the fur onto it, then it, 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 it never had fur onto it, I guess. I don't know where meat comes from for those folks, but never comes from an animal, I don't suppose. America. I got to salt some uh, fox eyes. Won't be able to uh, be able to type. Ah, but I'll be listening. Okay, good stuff, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, good stuff, Mark. Uh, He's still going to listen to us. He's, he's salting the, up a couple of fox eyes. Dad used to brain tan them, eh? I don't know if a Hunt for Fish done any brain tanning or if anybody on here did any brain tanning. And that's something that I I, uh, I should have learned off my father, but uh, it, it stopped with me. I, did, I didn't learn it, you know? And that's too bad because, well... Now it's, it's lost from the way that they did it and the way they had passed it down, you know, from father to son. But uh, I didn't get to stick around because uh, I, I left for the military, you know. And when you're, when I was in my teen years, I was playing hockey and, and stuff like that there and I was chasing around and stuff like that there, you know. <clears throat> but uh, then you always come back to your old ways, you know. And by that time, I was, I was away from, from dad and them, you know, talked to him every night on the phone and, and still learned a lot that way. But, you know, it's, uh, I wish that there was still much more I, I could have learned. And that's, that's my biggest regret. I wish I would have probably stayed home and, and then learned all those things instead of going off into the forces. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Raymond Williams, red rose tea, had to figure out, red rose tea, okay, there you go, I thought it was, yeah, 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 I remember my grandmother used to collect them, she had, uh, right there where her kitchen sink was, she had her uh, cupboards on either side, but on either side of that, there was little shelves, and all the, all the shelves were filled up with those little figurines, yeah, <clears throat> and she also had uh, uh, ceramic ducks. Do you remember that? The, the they were mallard, and it had uh, there were probably three or four into a set, and they were all flying, and they're normally hung up over doorway or archway or something like there, and uh, from big to small or small to big or whatever. Yeah, I always had them arranged. 
Uh, it was King Cole. I have many from my mother's house. Okay, one scene is red, red rolls and King Cole. Yeah, I can't remember by by that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump into the argument on this one. Maybe they both had them at, at the time. Maybe that was the thing to do. I remember uh, you go to uh, uh, get KFC one Kentucky Fried Chicken back when the Colonel was alive. <coughs> was alive, and you can get um, hockey pucks into it sometimes. You know. Yeah, so maybe, maybe, uh, the, the, uh, maybe it was Red Rose. He said, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, guys. Uh, I, I, I remember it, but I, I, I never paid much attention to it because I was only interested in the figurines, sure, or the tea bags, not the box that'll come into it. <clears throat> Strawberry rhubarb jam. All the way. Yes, buddy, Noel. That's exactly right. I'm with you on that one, brother. Uh, when you visit Vancouver Island, I'll take you out hunting mushrooms. And you have, you've got to have a crossbow to go hunting deer. Season open. Season open all year long. Yes, boy. Wicked. I know uh, I was out there by Victoria in a place called Esquimalt for a few months <clears throat> and uh, we used to walk from Esquimalt over to the city of Victoria. They had a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, boardwalk and sometimes it would be cement, sometimes it was boards and you see a lot of uh, house, boat houses or whatever they were actually people, I think living right on the, right onto the water. All, these little houseboats tied up to the to the wharfs and stuff like that. But it was a very uh, beautiful, beautiful walk and always ducks and geese and stuff like that. Uh, it was nice. And the temperature so, so mild because when I went, well, I was in Cold Lake, Alberta when I went over there. And I can't remember the time of year. I can't remember if it was fall that I went over. Might be fall. Yeah, it was the fall. I went over there from October to almost December, <clears throat> but uh, or September to December. I can't remember, but it was very, very, uh, very nice, very nice spot. And a lot of them, uh, little black tail, I think all black tail deers. Lord geez, they were everywhere. So Daniel says the Noel hunt, uh, it's delicious. Yes, buddy, 100%. Jacob Hockey 51. Sorry, Red Rose had figurines. All right, Red Rose it is. Uh, my wife makes wicked strawberry rhubarb pie. Oh, yes. I love rhubarb cobbler. I think that's what we call it. Man, that, when that's made good, that's a, that's a fine snack, that is. Yeah, that makes a wonderful, wonderful dessert. <clears throat> Yeah, everybody's saying they're doing rhubarb. Rhubarb goes good with everything. I guess it's just one of those things, eh, boy? Yeah. What part of your island are you from? I'm from uh, Stephenville, uh, the west coast, the west coast of the island. <clears throat> uh, IRC, there is an old story. What kind of berry? is the poppy it's a blueberry grandson that's why we <laughs> okay there's an old story there's an old story what kind of berry is a is that poppy it's a blueberry grandson but it's white poppy Yes, because it's green, lol. Yes, and that's so true, eh? Yeah, the blueberries, it comes in, uh, they're, they're white, and then it goes to a green, then it goes to a blue, and almost like to a purplish, or a greenish purplish, then into the nice blue. Yeah. <clears throat> you know a berry that we haven't talked about? And I used to love them. Gooseberries, we call them. They're almost like a transparent berry. You can you can look into the into, into the side in, inside of them like hey, eh? and they got little lines that goes down onto them. 
But uh, man, gooseberries, I love wild gooseberries. We used to have a really good patch back up here, but I hard to get to the gooseberry patch before they're ripe because the bears get them every time. <clears throat> How is your uncle doing? Uh, Jackie's not my uncle, he's, he's my uh, cousin. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he was dad's first cousin and either my first cousin once removed or my second cousin, I always call him second cousin, but some people said, no, he's your first cousin once removed, but, uh, he's only, he was only two or three years younger than, than, than dad or is, uh, I guess was cause dad's gone. Jackie's still here. Tough as nails, but he still likes to get out hunting and fishing and all that stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> still swinging the hammer with me when I was building the garage and everything. Like, man, I tell you, they don't make him that tough anymore. He's doing good though. He's doing good. I haven't seen anybody because I've been in a very small bubble because of uh, because of the COVID and because my wife is going through chemo therapy and stuff like that. So uh, uh, I've been keeping my bubble very, very small. Well, I, I don't have a bubble. And here in Newfoundland, we can't anymore. We're, we're still down to a single uh, house bubble because of that outbreak we had with the UK variant of the, of the, the COVID. Uh, my wife made f fermented rhubarb this year. Really good. Um, don't even know what that is by Daniel, but I guess it must be good. I live right near Esquimalt. They're freaking deer everywhere. Yes, they were. I know uh, my aunt, she lives. <clears throat> oh, boy. She lives on Vancouver Island, too. And it's a very popular place where she lives. But the deer, she can't have anything into their garden. Every time she plants bushes or berries or anything, the, the deer go in and destroy it all. Gone. And uh, yeah, I, so maybe that's why you can hunt them all year round. They're, they're everywhere. They've taken over. <clears throat> Mud tramps here. Hello, Becca. Corey Sharp. They were in the Red Rose Tea. Started back in the 60s. Okay, good stuff. We're getting this all figured out. Uh. Jacob Hockey 51, figurine started in Quebec, only in 67. That was the year Toronto won the cup. Last time. What's that, 53, 54 years? 54 years, I guess. Uh, hello, Miss Becca, Raymond says. Back was burning. We got three huge rhubarb patches, and our neighbor's kids are near here come over and pick away at it. Can't give up with it. He needs a few weeks ago. Yes, but a uh, rhubarb, man, I tell you, that's the. Uh, well, I got a rhubarb patch over back there. I got to, uh, I'm going to make them, um, <clears throat> I'm going to transplant them in the spring. And I'll go up and I'll get some softer ground. And, and I know there's a spot where I can get some good ground and then some peat moss and uh, <clears throat> spread them out a bit because they're so condensed. And I'm going to do raised bed because I find it. And everybody's the same way. Harder and harder to bend over as you get older. So I might as well get those raised beds built now. And yeah. That was very old gooseberries. We found some at Sobeys a few months ago. Downside is now. Uh, the downside is now I got kids. So I only got a couple. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Uh, backwards, our rhubarb patch is probably 10 by 12. Yeah. But I tell you, you can get uh, most times like uh, at least two cuttings off it, sometimes three a year, you know. And maybe on the mainland, you can get even more than that. <clears throat> yeah. We still pick lots of raspberries. We have lots behind the house. Raspberries are good. And they're a nice picking berry, too, because... Uh, uh, you don't have to bend over so far for them, you know, they're grown on the higher stocks, you know, so that's, that's a bit easier to pick. I like picking the raspberries too. 
and good eating too. Oh my God, love. Oh, remember one time though they they grow in a lot of the cutovers here, eh? You and uh, in the cutovers they take old bush piles and stuff and uh, brush piles. And I remember I found this wicked patch of uh, of raspberries, and that should have been a, a good indication for me not to go into it because it was growing out of all these old um like the old brush pile and there was berries everywhere and all around it was picked pretty clean and lord geez i seen that i went after it and learned my lesson I, my foot went down through the uh through all that old dead brush my boot got stuck underneath of it and there was a wasp nest there lord have mercy they stung me half to death Yeah, uh, Daniel says, sorry to hear that, but your wife, hope oh, she's doing good. Yeah, she goes for her next treatment on Thursday. But I had her down to the hospital today for blood work. And, uh, yeah, it's a long day. I wasn't expecting to be on on uh, on this chat that long. Lord Jesus, I'm talking for an hour and a half now. I can't shut up. Uh, my, oh, my. Better give it up soon, though. We'll give it up in a few minutes. <clears throat> uh... Yeah, my daughter went down for an operation today. She had to get her gallbladder taken out. So I had to have her down there at 7. We had to go down and pick her up and bring her to the hospital. And then I had to pick her up again at 12. And by, at 8.30, I had to have my wife down there for her to have her blood work. And then we go to Corner Rock on Thursday. <clears throat> uh, oh. Bay Area, Oak Bay Area. I, I can't remember all the names there, my buddy, uh, of uh, out there around. Uh, uh, no. She's half about halfway up uh, Vancouver Island and on the east side of the island. Uh, Kim. Not Kim. I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. But. Uh, yeah, they got a bad problem there with those uh, those little deer. <clears throat> uh, sorry I'm late. Uh, holy jeez. You got bit by a snake? What kind of snake did you get bit by? What tramp says you got bit by a snake tonight? Might as well shoot me right on the spot. I think I pass out, man. I don't like snakes. And I don't like ticks. I'd rather come face and eyes and wrestle with a bear than, than have to wrestle with a snake or a tick. Gooseberries. Are they the one with the purple, with the paper husk? The paper husk? Uh, I'm not sure, my buddy. They're, they're a nice berry that grows that, but that big around. They're right green. When they're uh, when they're they're green when they're green, and then they ripen up and they become pinkish and, and purplish. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, you can see into it almost like a, uh, like transparent almost. <clears throat> if I uh, if I think about it, next time I see a a gooseberry when I'm out and about, I'll uh, oh I think I got a video. Maybe the one where I went down to bird show. I showed a whole bunch of berries in that one. Lord geez, even the wild peas that we get growing here around the island. Uh, we've got a lot of wild peas that grows down by the beaches and stuff. <clears throat> uh, but I think I had uh, gooseberries on that one. Okay, back here. It's just cut up with over by salt brine mix in a jar. Put in the van, let it ferment. Yes, boy. Then what do you do with it? It, it? it turns into like a jam or something, or? <clears throat> Everybody says they love the raspberries. Everybody loves raspberry, yeah. He is your first cousin once removed. Second cousins are share a great grandparent. Okay, so he's my first cousin once removed. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, see, his father was my grandmother's sister. No. 
His father was my grandmother's brother. That's that's where that goes. <clears throat> you can see a lot of the, the native in 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 in, uh, in Jackie. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather and I, the grandfather four rolls 30 feet long. Top of a rhubarb still, I think. She's a strong lady, that's what Daniel says. Boy tape of berries are used for sock jam. Never even heard of sock jam before. Oh, hot thanks uh, for the live chat, Charlie. Have a good night. Yes, buddy, you too. Ticks are crazy now in Nova Scotia. Buddy, I tell you what, Ed, when I first got there, I got there in 89. <clears throat> and uh, I don't even think, the, well, I guess they still probably had them down around the Yarmouth area. But that's something that we didn't even check for. We didn't we didn't do tick checks or anything back then. We'd be out in the woods all the time. And then early fall, get one out there, getting our deer stands ready and all that stuff. We never, we did all the trout and bass fishing and brown trout and all that stuff. And uh, never, don't ever remember getting a tick onto me. And then all of a sudden, they come. And when they come, they were, they come like, like maggoty, man. And I heard around the southern, southern shore, man, there's a lot of them got that Lyme disease into them, too. Something like 15 or, or more different types of ticks there. <clears throat> yeah. Not good. It tastes like crunchy pickles. Jeez, yeah. never had rhubarb it tastes like crunchy pickles before. <clears throat> I think I got the venom out. Holy Jesus, a venomous snake. She got lightheaded for a bit. Yes, boy. Yeah, we, they used to call that a, a, a poultice here. Sometimes you get a splinter or whatever right there, or you get a little bit of an infection, you wrap it up uh, a poultice around your around wherever the infection is to help draw it out. Yeah, that's, that's I don't know if that's just a local term. Uh. <clears throat> Daniel, I'm going to take off now. Getting up at seven thirty for school. Oh, buddy, yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for dropping in. Have a good day in school tomorrow. Be safe. I'm in Dartmouth, and the ticks are here now. Bedford area is the worst. Yes, buddy. I heard it's bad there. <coughs> and I heard down by like uh, Liverpool and Bridgewater, it's supposed to be really bad down there too. Yeah. So anyways, what we got? Still got 23 people in here. Anybody got any last minute questions or anything? I'll pull this. Yeah. Daniel says he used to live in Dartmouth. My son lives in Dartmouth. Yeah. <clears throat> small world, small world. Every now and then you'll run into somebody that knew me. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, next time I go live, I guess uh, I'll uh, certainly get some of the equipment and everything there now. So I just got to get the... Um, um, that OBS download it and learn how to use it. I don't want to go back onto it until I get that figured out. That way I can, in the background, it'd be like I, was, I can take myself from being here in the center and have myself down in the in the corner. Oh, how do I do that? Yeah, I have myself down in, in just off to the corner or down here or somewhere or wherever. And then I can have uh, really nice uh, scenic pictures and stuff in, in the background. And maybe when I go out and I do a very scenic uh, a video or something because what I want to do when I get the back uh, back into making videos and everything settles down here and I get back into making a video videos on a regular basis then uh, and getting back into doing some good adventures 
then I'll uh, I will uh, try to post a, at least one video a week, maybe maybe two, and uh, and if I don't, maybe I'll jump on with a little live stream and give you give you a quick update as to what's going on, why there's no video posted that week or something to that effect, or if I got any news or something like that to share with you guys. But uh, I don't want to uh, bore you guys with these live chats. <clears throat> Okay, RCF Oz. Hey Oz, how's it going, buddy? Uh, deranging Greenwood is so bad, but it takes now. Yes, bye. Yeah. I, I, I remember you had to keep the grass short when I was in Greenwood because uh, the ticks started coming around there, you know. But yeah. So the, the range, you're talking about the golf range, right? Uh, good night. All right. Good night, my buddy. Take care out there. And um, we got people here from coast to coast. And uh, we had them in from uh, Alaska right on down in the southern states. So it was a, a good showing of all over North America. Good stuff. I don't know if anybody was uh, from abroad here. <clears throat> you should go. Anyways, just to be safe. Oh, yeah, talking about, yeah. So, yeah, Becca, she got bit by the snake. It was dark, and we got a flashlight, stuck over the logs to print onto it. So, now he's happy, sure, it was. Yeah, that's nothing to mess around with. Snake weights, Lord, jeez. Yeah. That'd be a rough. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Good, good point there, Daniel. Uh, when you get up here, Charlie, I'll take you to small mouth fish in Morris Lake next to Shearwater. Opens on first of April. That sounds good, but I, geez, I, I got a, <clears throat> I have a, a granddaughter over there that uh, I haven't got to see now in almost two years. We're going to go over there the, the summer, right? And then, well, everything happened with my wife and. And then obviously the pandemic. So, <clears throat> yeah, everything all screwed up there now. So hopefully things will come back around and we'll be able to travel and stuff. But I used to love bass fishing. A lot of fun. Love these chests, uh, Chuck. That's how friends hang out during the COVID. Yeah, I suppose. Bye. Yeah. And uh, once I get that other program for streaming, uh, that OBS, I could have people on with me, you know, have like a panel like what Daniel does there. Firing range. Ah, uh, firing range. Where's the firing range in Greenwood? On leans. You talking about over there where uh, the skeet range was or the archery range? I can't remember firing range in Greenwood. <clears throat> Or you about down there in, in Grenville. Thoughts and prayers are with your family. I live in Gander for a few years. My dad was in here. So yeah. Uh, search and rescue. Great videos. Thanks, thanks Vincent, buddy. Uh, yeah. Um, I appreciate everybody with their concerns for, for my wife. And like I said, hopefully, hopefully this will be one of these or one of her last treatments. Yeah, the first week after, not good, man. Yeah, she's she's pretty sick the first week after. Boy, oh boy, that knocks knocks her out. Yeah, I had to walk seven acres to the house after sucking. Holy jeez, man. Yeah, well, you take care of yourself there, Becca. Let us know how you make out. <clears throat> oh, 17 acres. Holy jeez. Yeah. Raymond's about a half hour from the Nova Scotia border. My bad, Grenville. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, Lord Jesus, uh, we there was no ticks back there like years ago in, in Grenville. We used to sleep on the ground out there. Yeah, had a lot of fun out there. See my first porcupine in Grenville. Yeah, I broke ranks and ran across the shooting range to have a an investigate it. Yeah, then we went and ran Sandbank Hill for a while. <laughs> All right, so that's it, guys, man. I've been talking now for one hour and 41 minutes, 41 and a half minutes. We're going to call her a night. Becca, you uh, you take care. You keep a good close eye on to that, and then, uh, probably we'll get that checked out. Tough lady got bit by a snake tonight and had to walk, uh, suck the venom and out and uh, walk 17 acres back to her house. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, everybody stay safe. And uh, we'll see you, see you next time. I got nothing for videos recorded, but uh, I'll take my, uh, my GoPro with me uh, tomorrow. I, got, I put the tree pens out last night. Yeah. So I'll go, uh, I'll go check them. I'll go check them in the morning and I got to pull them up because they're across the, the river. Do I got to pull them up? What's today? Today is what? Monday or Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. I leave on Thursday for carnival. So tomorrow's Wednesday. I got to pull up my uh, pens tomorrow. <clears throat> Because uh, I'll lose my snow bridge. I think I, I got a little video of me crossing over the river and uh, on, on the school where, where we got a snow bridge uh, across the across the brook. But after Thursday and Friday, well, chances are we might lose that. So everything that I got over that way has got to come back this way. <clears throat> so, uh, anyways. Uh, good seeing you all. Thanks for all stopping in. And uh, yeah, I thought I was going to talk for about a half hour. I still got tea left. That's an hour and a half old tea now. Lord have mercy. I can't drink that. <clears throat> okay, guys. Um, you all take care. And uh, I'll see you on, on the next video or on the next uh, live stream or if somebody has me on for. Uh, uh, I guess when her, when they when they're doing the the live stream, but yeah, this this light I got, it's got different settings too. Way, eh? check this out. It's a good rig. My kids got this for me. Kids and grandkids. It's still on now, but it's a very very dull. But I can pump that up however bright I need it. There you go. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, thanks for all joining in. Uh, hope everybody has a, a good, good week. Stay safe out there. We'll go for each other. Be kind and uh, get out there and do your, do your adventures. Okay. Take care, everyone. How do I end this? End the stream. Your stream will stop immediately when you are no longer live. What? And...